Doctor, you have a new book coming out called The Hormone Fix, and it deals with balancing hormones through diet, among other things. Explain the connection between our hormones and diet and how they influence and how your diet can influence hormones, especially when hormone levels change so much. Yeah, yeah, and our hormones do change on a monthly basis, let alone yeah. uh, you know annual basis, and and certainly as we age. The biggest thing, as a gynecologist and obstetrician, the what I would like to say the most important hormones are estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, right, DHA, mm -hmm. all those good hormones. But when it really comes down to it, our major hormones that influence and drive our reproductive hormones that help us on our, our hormonal balance, help us through our menstrual cycles, help us through menopause, et cetera, our, our major hormones are the ones that drive that. And that really the two key ones are insulin and cortisol. And then the third overarching, which I would say is our primary hormone is oxytocin. These three hormones that I mentioned influence our entire body and you know, hundreds of other processes going on in our body. So when we master these hormones, as I outline how with my Keto Green Way in my book, we really are able to get that sense of peace, calm, like, and like breeze through these hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. So I recognize the hormones that you talk about, and I think a lot of people do when you talk about cortisol. Uh, people think stress hormone. Uh, some other ones are the feel-good hormones that you talk about. And Explain what's happening in our body that diet can influence those sort of things. Yeah. So the first one is, you know, cortisol definitely our stress hormone, but it's also our anti-inflammatory hormone. So how cortisol and insulin kind of play off each other is when we're stressed and we're pouring out cortisol, we are actually, we're, we're working to douse inflammation, right? It's a response and it's an anti-inflammatory, a really good hormone. But it also increases the production of glucose and release of glucose into the bloodstream. And so then we need insulin on board. And insulin, another one of the major hormones are driving that glucose back down, you know, driving it into the cell, stored in fat or wherever. And so you have that continuation of stress, continuation of poor diet with high carbohydrates and low fat. I mean, what we were told to do in the 80s. When you have that combination, you're really creating insulin resistance. And then add in snacking, which we should not do never do, you know, rarely with exception do, okay, let me just say it that way. Okay. Because when we're continuously eating, which we've been told to do, right, three meals, three snacks, it is bogus, it is destructive to our bodies, to our hormones. So when that happens, we're continuing to eat, we continue to release glucose into our bloodstream and we continue to pile on insulin to drive glucose down. And what happens, we become insulin resistant so we need higher levels of insulin, higher levels of glucose, and that again also creates this, you know, it worsens hormonal imbalance mm -hmm. and just the inflammation. And type two diabetes, as we're seeing in our population of women, men, kids, just increasing exponentially. Mm -hmm. So that's one way, and that's one way I describe in my diet. It's not just what we eat, because you know we know that 99% of diets fail. I mean, that's what the research says. 99% of diets fail, and so you know it's more than the fact that it's a four-letter word with the word "die" in it, right? So it's more than that. So what is it? It's because food alone only counts for 25% of the solution. The rest is the lifestyle. So in my book, in the Hormone Fix the Keto Green Way, I talk about empowering your lifestyle through how we nourish our body, whether it's food or other lifestyle practices, as well as things that could be sabotaging us. And so when we clear up the other 75%, we've got, you know, we win.